Hello everyone, my name is Anshal and today I'm here to present my capstone project on relational database. So what I have to do in this project is that I have to do a product dissection on any of the leading platforms of my choice. So I have selected Zomato. So Zomato is a food delivery and a dining app and a website. Here in this, we will talk about app. So let's see what is the company overview of Zomato. Zomato was founded by Dipinder Goel and Pankaj Chadda in the year 2008. And what it does there is that it provides food at your doorstep with just few clicks. And it provides the delivery, which is very fast. So it has emerged as a top leading platform in the food delivery apps. Now let's see what is the product dissection of Zomato. So first we should know that what product dissection is. So it means that breaking down of the various components and the features and the functionalities of the Zomato to understand how it works. Now we will see the product dissection. First point is that Zomato has a wide range of restaurants that users can choose from and with the variety of the cuisines that they like. Basically Zomato has a restaurant discovery feature means that it allows users to explore the nearby restaurants based on various criteria like location, cuisine type, price. And user can actually see the menus the, and photos of the restaurants also, and they can read the reviews and then they can make decisions about the restaurant, whether they want to order food from there or not. Now, Zomato interface is very user-friendly. Anyone can navigate it. And there is a search functionalities also in there. Now, Zomato has an, uh, Zomato uses the algorithms. See what these algorithm they use is that whenever you order food, let, and from where you have ordered. So it basically tracks our past orders and preferences and the location. And according to that, they analyze our behavior and then they uh, recommend us that what restaurants we can choose and what dishes we can choose. So basically, it provides the personal recommendations to us. Also, there's an option of user rating and reviews. So whenever you order food, you can check that whether the restaurant has positive reviews or not. Then you can decide. Also, Zomato has a real-time update. Means that whenever you order food, you can check that uh, your you can track your orders and you can also check the delivery updates that either it is out for delivery or not. Now we will see the real world problems and what are the solutions that Zomato has given. So first problem, problem is busy lifestyle. See, as we know that how fast life is and people have busy lifestyles, whether they wear they don't have time to cook even regular meals. Either they are working people or if you talk about the old age people, our elderly people, they can't cook by themselves. So Zomato has come up with the solutions that users don't have to leave their homes. They can simply get their food delivered and their doorstep with just few clicks. So it will also save their time. And even if they want to order food for the people who are in different city, then they can do that very easily. Second problem is food waste reduction. Restaurants face this food wastage by either they are, their food stock is unsold or they have overproduced the stock. So because of that, they face a lot of issues of the food wastage. So Zomato has come up with a solution that they have started an initiative named Feeding India. It is a program which aims at reducing the food wastage and what it does is that it partners with the restaurants and it to donate the surplus food to those who are in need or in the local charities or in the shelters. So what this initiative does is that it not only helps the people who are in need, but it also minimizes the food wastage. Now, the third problem is users' preferences and limiting options. Uh, some users are there who have restrictions in diet due to health issues, like they may be diabetic or they don't want to eat spicy. Or some users are there who are either vegan or gluten-free. So they may face a lot of struggle in finding the restaurants as per their choice. So Zomato has come up with a solution that it provides a search and filtering options that, you, that allow users to find restaurants 
where they can filter for vegan, gluten free, spicy, and even kids choice. And what they can do is they can also customize their food that they have ordered. If they want it to be very less spicy, they can also mention that. Or they, if they want another modifications, they can also also add as a special instruction in that. Now the fourth problem is hygiene quality. Users often worry about the cleanliness and the hygiene of the restaurants because maybe if the food quality is bad, they can have disease like food poisoning or diarrhea. So it's not good for our health. So the matter has come up with a solution that it provides such as students inspection reports. So whenever user wants to know about the hygiene quality, they can have a detailed information about the restaurant. So from all these points, what conclusion have we, we have come with that Zomato's innovative solutions addresses the real world challenges faced by the users in dining industry. And by providing the platform like this, you know, uh, by giving us the top rated restaurants, ordering food and cooking table reservations, so matter has enhanced the overall dining experience of the user's clone. Now we will see what are the top features of the Zomato. First is multi-city coverage. So Zomato is available in each and almost every city. So no, no matter wherever you go, you can find good places to eat. So it's like a Zomato is like having a food guide. If you are traveling in a new city and looking for restaurants there, you can easily find it there. Now, next is order customizations. As I have said that so if you want order to put that which is less spicy or you know you or you want to add some special instructions like you want to request modifications in the orders. So you can do that according to your need and according to your dietary requirements. Next is table reservations. In order, addition to food delivery, so Matter has enabled users to make table reservation also. Real-time updates. So Matter provides real-time updates and notifications to the users. They can check what is the status of their orders or they, can, they also receive alert information about order confirmation or delivery updates. And also if they want to visit a restaurant to dine in, they can also check the opening hours of the restaurant, current wait times and the table availability. So these time of the real-time updates are provided by the Zomato. Next feature is discounts. So Zomato features deals and discounts and special offers and so that if you want to enjoy a favorite food for the discounted prices, you can do that too. Now next is our schema description about the Zomato. So first we should know what schema is. So schema is basically the conceptual view of the data. Before we create tables and uh, before implementing our database, first we conceptualize our data. And in the schema, we have entities and the attributes. So what entities, entity is, uh, can be a, entity is basically an object in which the information is stored. Entity can be any person, place, or anything. And what attribute is? Attribute is a characteristic of that entity. Let's suppose if our entity is user. So what can be the characteristic of the user? It can be the name of user or it can be the address or phone number. So this this is the entity and these are the and the name and the name, phone number and address. These were the these are the attributes or the characteristics. So in what the uh, in schema, what we do is that we create entity and the attributes, and according to that, we define we we create our database. So before implementing our data into data, we implementing our uh, into database, we have to design a schema description. So uh, Let's start with the first entity. First is the user entity. So user entity, what it does, it, it contains information about user. As I've said that entity will contain, and, uh, and, uh, entity will contain some information. So a user entity contains information about the user. And what can be the attributes of the entity? Of the user entity that can be username, email, password that I've mentioned here. So first is user ID. It will be always be a primary key because it will be unique to be a unique identifier for the each user. Next is username. So 
so me, uh, when you create an account on Zomato, so what username you will choose, that is the username. Then the email, and after creating the account, what will the user's email address, the password for that account, phone number of the user and address for the delivery. Next is restaurant ad entity. See, restaurants are the core of the Zomato as they are the key partners for delivering and dining. First attribute is restaurant ID. It will always be a primary key because it will be a unique identifier for each and every restaurant. Then will be the name of the restaurant, the address of restaurant, restaurant number, phone number, that is delivery time, means the expected delivery time given by the restaurant to the user. Then it is rating, the ratings that are each restaurant gets by user. Next is order entity. So order entity represents the request of the orders placed by user. It has attributes like order ID, ID that will be primary key because it will uniquely identify each and every order. Next will be restaurant ID. It, it is a foreign key. It will be referencing to the restaurant entity because the uh, see the restaurant associated with orders. The user ID, so it will be also a foreign key and will it will be referencing to the user entity. Means the user who has placed that order. Then amount is the total price of the order. Then order status, that is the status of the order that, uh, uh, that it is placed or not. Then date placed means the, the date on which the order is placed. Next is payment entity. It represents the transaction details of the orders. It has attributes that is payment ID. It will primary key because it will identify each payment uniquely. Then is the payment method means through the payment, the, may, the mode through which the payment has been done like card or debit card or Paytm or whatever, or cash on delivery. Then next is order ID. It will be a foreign key and it will be referencing to the order entity. Why? Because the order associated with the payment that will be that information will be there. Next is bill. So bill means the total price paid for the order. Then payment status, the status of payment like uh, is it paid or not? Then uh, there is delivery entity. So delivery entity ensures that each order is delivered or or whether it is not delivered to the users. So first here attribute is delivery ID. It will be a primary key because it will be uniquely identify each delivery. Then order key. So it will be a foreign key that will be referencing to the orders entity, the orders associated with each delivery. Then delivery status means that status of the delivery that either it is out of it for delivery or not, or it has been delivered or canceled. Then expected delivery time means the estimated time for the delivery to be completed. Then item entity. So item entity represents the items ordered by the user. First is item ID attribute. It is a primary key because it will uniquely identify for each item. Then restaurant ID, it will be a foreign key that will be referencing to the restaurant ID. So basically it establishes a relation between the item and the restaurant it belongs to. Then is the order and ID, it will be also foreign key referencing the order entity. It associates each item with the order it belongs to. Then the name of the item being ordered, then the quantity means the total number of items and price. What is the price of that item? Next is review ent entity. So review entity, what it is, is that it is it represents the rating and the reviews given by the users for restaurant. So first here is rating ID. So it is a primary key. It will identify, uniquely identify each rating. Then is a user entity ID. It will be a foreign key referencing to user entity. The user who has posted the review. Then restaurant ID, it will be a foreign key referencing the restaurant ID. Means the restaurant being reviewed. Then rating, the rating given by the user. Date posted means the date on which the user commented the review. Then the comment, the uh, whatever the comment uh, or the uh, review by the user about the restaurant. Now we will see, now we will, uh, what is the relationships between these entities that we have created? The review entity, item, delivery, and all these. We have created all these entities. Now we will see what is the relationship between them. So, for that, we have created a ER diagram, which is here. This is our ER diagram. And this is the name of the entity, user entity, order entity, delivery entity. And these are the attributes, order ID, restaurant ID, user ID. These are the attributes that I have mentioned here of each and every entity. And 
It is PK means this is the primary key and FK here is this is the foreign key that I have mentioned earlier. Now, what is the ER diagram? So ER diagram is the entity relationship diagram, means the entities which have created and the re what relationship is between them. Uh, and why, uh, so what ER diagram does is that it provides a clear understanding of how all these different parts of the Zomato system are connected and interact with each other. So first we will see the relationship of users and order. So users place orders as we know. So each user can place multiple orders and each order is placed by a single user. So it is a one to many relationship. Here it is user and orders. So it is one to many relationship. These three lines represent it is many and these lines represent it is one. So it is so it is one to many relationship. Then restaurant receive orders. So each restaurant can receive multiple orders and each restaurant is placed at a single restaurant. So it, it is also a one to many relationship, restaurant and orders. Here is the restaurant. And here is the order. So it is one to many relationship. Then we have payment on order. So each order is associated with one payment. And each payment is associated with one order only. So it is a one to one relationship. So it is payment and order. It is a one to one relationship. Next is delivery on orders. So each order is linked to one delivery. And each delivery is linked with one order. So it is also one to one relationship. Now restaurant have reviews. So each restaurant can have multiple reviews by the user. So it is one to many relationship. So this is restaurant and this is review. So one to many relationship. Then restaurant have items. So each restaurant can have multiple items and each item belongs to a single restaurant. So it is one to many relationship. Now, order having items. So each order can have multiple items and each item belongs to one order. So it is one to many relationship. Orders and items. So it is one to many relationship. And then user post reviews. So each user can write multiple reviews and each review is associated with one user only. So it is a one to many relationship between user and reviews. So here it is user, this one and reviews. So it is one to many relationship. So now what conclusion can we come up with after this all product dissection and the case study that uh, Zomato is like a digital hub where you can find restaurants, order code, connect with the others. You can also check out the restaurants. You can dine in there. So Zomato is like a Instagram, but for food. Zomato keeps track of the users, restaurants, reviews, orders, payment, and menus. So Zomato's smart technology has helped it becoming a big player in the food delivery world. So that's all about Zomato and the product dissection. Thank you so much.